this this Jesus fucking Christ Right, get comfortable people Abigail's diary in fact I'm just gonna get my tablet and uh, there we go <clears throat> September 9th 1997 after a long yet pleasant trip we finally arrived in keen sight leaving uh, Boston behind us was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do but for Mitch this was the opportunity of a lifetime a major government funded institution like Hexacor Biogenetics was more than enough to persuade us both to pack what little belongings we had and set out for this little piece of heaven nestled deep in mountain in in mountains should it be in the mountains okay in mountains of idaho i wonder if the elementary school is hiring september 28th 1997 i'm still waiting for a response from ks elementary but mitch says not to worry as it's only a matter of time he's been talking to a lot of people who run this company and they've assured him that i'll be working as a substitute teacher in no time I don't understand how a company like Hexcore can influence a public school, but the whole town seems to be under their thumb in one way or the other. Mitch, at least, appears to be settling into his new job nicely. Oh well, I guess I'll have lots of time to decorate the cosy and spacious home his company so generously provides. October 3, 1997. I haven't heard anything back from the school yet, but it's given me lots of time to explore every nook and cranny of this quaint, picturesque town. Just recently, I found myself downtown and was rather studded by the jarring architecture of the urban district, so metropolitan and overpopulated for a town with a mere 30,000 residents. I'm not sure if I'm in awe or merely spooked by what I see. What I am sure of is that in addition to their strong ties with the company, the people here seem to be very proud of the town's history beginning with the Lewis and Clark expedition 190 years ago that paved the way to this hidden mountain paradise until the arrival of its founder, Spencer Crackhorn, in 1863. I wonder if I'll ever get used to living somewhere so dramatically different from Boston. Though I'm starting to warm to the genuine small town hospitality, some street corners of Keensight are absolutely charming. November 13th, 1997. A few months have passed since we've moved in. I'm finally starting to feel useful. I'm now teaching a primary class and being with adorable children all day has ignited me with a new purpose. Even though the class size is a unusual, oh, in an unusual state of flux, all too often groups of children of a different age and description suddenly fall ill then miraculously recover after being treated with one of the many hospitals in town. I hope whatever is causing this isn't permanent. Meanwhile, Mitch is flourishing at his new organisation, and it appears the health problems that the children are experiencing are even more acute in adults. Some people are cursing the company, blaming some research being conducted at the dam for the mysterious illness. But there's, something, uh, but there's nothing to support these outrageous claims. I don't understand why they'd blame the company. Hexco is practically worshipped by the townspeople and government alike for what they've accomplished here. In fact, if not for their generosity, this whole place would probably deteriorate into a ghost town overnight. Maybe they just need a boogeyman to blame, even though their energies should be focused instead on finding the cause of the strange epidemic. December 20... Uh, 27, 1997. The company hosted a Christmas dinner and I must admit it was the most spectacular event I've ever enjoyed. The villa where we attended the party was breathtaking, the very essence of Victorian beauty and elegance. I've heard it belongs to one of the company's executives and from what I was told by the previous owner, a steamboat uh, magnate vanished there without a trace in 1939. Was its name Ullman? Something like that. To top it off, Mitch got a promotion and everybody in attendance congratulated him like a true celebrity. By January, he may even have his own private office at the dam. If that happens, he won't have to work downtown anymore and we might be able to get a bigger home. Maybe just outside of Keen Sight. Who knows? In any case, it would have been the perfect evening if not for one company executive 
who relentlessly ogled me with his beady black eyes like a vulgar eagerly to grasp a dove in its talons. I hope to God I never have to see him again. January 25th, 1998. Mitch came home today in an utterly deplorable state. He isn't physically fatigued, but his handsome features seem worn down by the pressure from work. As soon as I asked him about it, he snapped at me and immediately changed the subject. I wonder why he won't talk to me about it. I don't want there to be any secrets between us. 1st February, 1998. I had to leave Keen's site for a few days because my mum got sick, but thankfully she's back to normal now. Mitch wasn't able to call, but maybe it's better that way. I had a minute to chat to my cousin Michelle, who's the daughter of my mum's sister. Well... Yeah, that, yes. She works for the FBI and told me in confidence that the company doesn't always conduct business lawfully. Apparently, she, uh, the Bureau has been investigating them for years and the epidemic that's afflicting keen sight is now truly disturbing. I have to warn Mitch as soon as possible. February 14th, 1998. Today, Mitch asked me to go out for dinner and took me to eat at... Um, Sakamura. Oh, we go there later. He looked more disheveled than usual, and now I understand why. He knows something about the illegal business that the company is conducting, and the secret behind the isolation of this small mountain community. Even more shocking, he said, our house is bugged, and that's why he wouldn't talk to me about it. Mitch doesn't know what to do, and he's so afraid of what the company might do if he leaks information. It won't just be the end of his professional career, and he can't go on like this. He begged me to pretend like nothing has changed and try hard not to arouse suspicion, but I'm afraid myself. I think I should ask Michelle for help. 5th of March, 1998. Mitch finally agreed to talk to Michelle and work with the FBI. After their last case ended abruptly, a man died because of experiments involving the company, and he couldn't even assure us that his family was taken care of. On the other hand, what he did ensure was that the company came out clean. We met with Michelle on the outskirts of Keen's site. She laid it all out, a complex jumble of conspiracies. Although the company and its research are protected by the government, a handful of agents within the Bureau secretly and discreetly are building a case. Because Mitch is the only person with access to the top secret archives of the dam, the evidence he can provide will be instrumental in bringing them to justice. March 12th, 1998. Mitch didn't come home. I waited for him all night, but he didn't come home. This morning, I talked to one of his colleagues in town, but nobody knows where he disappeared to. I even tried the dam, but those armed guards stopped me at the gate. I wasn't about to leave. Uh, I was about to leave when that beardy-eyed freak from the party showed up. He told me that Mitch took a few days off to go hiking in the mountains. Lying bastard. I went to the police after that, but the officer in charge said I couldn't file a missing person report until after 48 hours. I know what happened to him, but I can't trust anybody enough to do anything about it. This whole town is under their control, but if they think I'm going to stay put and keep my mouth shut, they're wrong. I already called Michelle, and she's meeting me here with a group of agents. We're going to find Mitch together, even if it means dismantling the godforsaken dam piece by piece. Yeah? How'd that go for you? Now that, that was some words. And we're running out of time again. So that diary wasn't bad, actually. kind of enjoyed that one. Oh, right. Yeah, so we actually have a, um, uh, I guess you could call it a puzzle, I suppose. But the key to this is actually fairly easy to find. Uh, luckily, I do have it written down somewhere. Um, 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 um. Somewhere. Ah, there we go. So one six, I think it's six three seven. Okay, we'll find that eventually. But instead of like you know coming back and um, backpedaling to it, actually I think this might be the door that we have to go through anyway. But we'll find plenty of those little uh, 
locked up places. We might just go for an hour on this one and then cut this video up. Come on, dude. Really? You are a little git, aren't you? There we go. Off with your head. <laughs> one, <laughs> one last act of defiance. Ah, yeah, this uh, this is where you find the code for that, by the way, because you can see one, two, three is missing, six and seven are missing. It doesn't actually tell you the um, correct arrangement of the numbers, but it gives you the numbers. So it's kind of annoying that you still have to kind of guess, but it's fine. So yeah, we're going to go for an hour and we'll cut this video up again. All right. Let's keep going. Oh, got a checkpoint there. Sorry, love. Yep, she's dead. Now, do we have any bullets? We actually have loads of bullets. We have loads of these enhanced bullets. So, sure, let's use those. Nothing too exciting going on here. Oh! I actually forgot about him. Look how sly he is. Hidden around the corner there. Well, he has no head now. Which pleases me. Oxygen is becoming... A rare resource. Well, it's not that bad. Oh, you little sausage! Get off me. Get the fuck off me. Honestly. Pretty sure there's an achievement involving balloons somewhere. Might be wrong. Ha, look, it's the Sony PlayStation. Uh, it's the Sony... wasn't the Sony PlayStation, was it? It's the Nintendo PlayStation. Which is kind of funny. Kind of like that little detail. There you go, dude. Feel better for that. Uh, I don't think there's. Oh. Oh, he's getting back. Oh, great. There's a there's a thing with nothing in it. Come on then. There you go. And he's playing Daymare on the Invader Station. That I kind of like that. That's pretty cool. Imagine having like a massive, great big garage like this with your. Um, fun no more. We have full life and the Craven family. Imagine having like a setup like this. You can just open up the garage door for a bit of oxygen. Not quite sure how that opens with the table in the way, but I digress. All right. So what do we have here? load back up again. I don't know what you're breathing so hard for. I don't mind the environments, you know, it's obvious that they tried. Hello. She tried to. Oh, right. You can't go upstairs. So we shall continue going forwards. Forever forwards. Always forwards. Forwards onto dawn. Oh, your head came off. That's unfortunate. No more apples for you. Stay frosty. Oh, we got some rats. Not going to be playing with the rats. Come on. There we are. She should be done. Next. Come on. There we go. You know they're dead when their head comes off. So here we are.
After an exhausting night shift, Samuel awakens in the Vermilion Forest in the Firewatch Tower where he works. His sleep wasn't especially peaceful as he suffers from vivid nightmarish hallucinations, called daymares by the way. Name of the game. If he doesn't take his medication, he must find his pills. More now than ever before, his strange condition deteriorates even further. Why indeed? All right. Well. Oh yeah. Today it's up to Cooper. It doesn't surprise me that he's late again. Okay. So notice when we woke up, it was kind of like a bright summer's day outside. Now it's rain. That happened very fast. These books relate to the behavioural neurology and cognitive disorders. Given my affliction, I do the utmost to educate myself on the matter. Eh, yeah, makes sense. We've got some eggs that are boiled up by the look of things. We really leave this place in a bit of a mess for the next guy. Yeah, sounds like some of my work colleagues. Sam Walker here. I'm at the tower at the Hunter's Pass. Anybody out there? Over. Thing is, my replacement hasn't arrived yet. Anyone know what happened to Cooper? USFS Control. Anyone read me? Anybody? God damn it! It's me again. Sam, finally! I've been trying to reach you! What happened? <sighs> Sorry, I, I must have passed out. I had a nightmare, too. Baby, I, I don't think I'm doing too well without my pills. It's only been a few hours, and I'm already starting to feel... Sam, just come home right away. What? Is something wrong? What? Sweetie? Damn. Yeah. Damn. It's already been several hours since I took my pills. I hope I can handle it. I'm sure you're going to be fine. What's the worst that could happen? Look at this. We just sit up here all day, drinking beer, eating pizza. Pretty sweet bloody job, if you ask me. Alright, so yeah, this place is kind of a mess. Old wifey wants to talk. Death rides the forest when man is careless. That's true. Damn. What the hell is going to happen this time? I don't know, mate. Maybe, maybe you shouldn't go. Maybe you shouldn't have dropped your pills. Ah, uh, Cooper, damn you. I'm not gonna cover you this time. Yeah, fuck you, Cooper. You're always late. This is a storage room. It houses the tower's latest and greatest generator. Oh, I guess that's the old generator. Alright, well, sweet FA we can do here. Let's go. I love the draw distance on the grass there. Oh, it's a bloody long way to go. Good thing we can't get lost. Oh, having daymares. Yeah, that's a real thing in this game. It's oh no, no, really annoying. The hallucinations are already coming. Yeah, that's the worst part about playing as this guy. They're, they're really annoying. I don't think they're done particularly well either. Woodside Bridge. Well, yep, that's the waterfall. 
Let's get out of here. We had a nice little relaxing walk through the woods. Yeah, apart from the day mares, I suppose. There's no trace of Cooper's car. But where the hell is he? Lazy bastard. Fee required for picnicking, all camping, roadside parking, trailheads, and restrooms. Really? Gotta to pay to have a dump? In one of these? That's really bad. It doesn't look like there's a lot of room in there, to be honest. Anyway. Not sure what... Uh, oh, it's... Uh, yeah. Don't know who lives here. Guess no one's no one's there today. All right. Now, now what did I do with my car keys? Shit! I must have left them at the tower. Now the first time I came down here to f only find out that we've got to go back for the keys, I was like, "Game, that is literally the lamest thing you possibly could have done." There's a map of the area here, along with several advertising brochures. Luckily, don't panic. We don't have to go all the way back. The doofus has dropped them on the floor. Somehow. Yink. There's a floating woman. It's now going to charge us, but that's okay. Let's get out of here. Get in the car. Yeah, kind of like a really pointless little thing to force the player to go back to pick up the keys. So why? Welcome to Cedar Grove. Ensure that everybody has a pleasant stay. Please be aware of the following. Checkout time is 1 p.m. Visitors must... Blah, blah, blah. Anyone found to be impaired by alcohol or drugs can be removed from the park. Anyone creating a disturbance or acting in a manner detrimental to the safety of others can be removed from the park. Park attendant has the authority to restrict entrance to the park. Well, you let's get out of it. Five minutes and one incompetent play to twist my perfect game into an imperfect mess. Even so, Kane would have been proud upon a key site but I still had work to do and players to silence now was my turn to make a move uh -huh. Wow, 70 miles. That's quite the trip to work and back. After a gruelling jeep ride through the winding roads of the Redcrest Mountains, Samuel arrives home safely to his cabin on the outskirts of town. Worried by the argument... Argument? He had with his wife at... What? They had an argument? Alright. He becomes even more unhinged. Must have happened in the, the, something we didn't see. He becomes even more unhinged as it's been several hours since he took his medication. Why the hell are the lights off? Oh, come on. You didn't leave the generator on all night again? God damn it, wife. Honestly. Well, let's go see if we can't switch the generator on. Good thing we've got our handy dandy little torch, which apparently we always have in our pocket. And there's our generator. No, the generator was just off, which is fine. We've got our own little, is that a septic tank? I guess it's a septic tank. They're not really a thing in this country. I mean, in some places, but not really. I'm just trying to like search for stuff because like every now and again you can find something to interact with and it's an achievement. Oh wife. 
Where are you, oh wife? Didn't even do the dishes. Jesus. Oh, hello. Maybe she's Sweetie? been on the booze. Sweetie? Huh? What's my tape recorder doing out here? It looks like a cassette is missing. Yeah, that would be very uh, important right at the very end of the game. Best seat of the house. I don't think there's anything actually to find in here. Oh. News. Newspapers on the mysterious uh, disappearance around Keen Sight. I was investigating this. Well. I hope he's investigating with conviction, sir. Yeah, yeah, the game d does that. HQHQ. <laughs> Do you receive me? Over. Delta 4RG0 pilots have betrayed the company. Attempts to steal samples recovered from Aegis during the flight. Following this conduct, I had to kill me. Major Sandman. Well, that was unfortunate. <sighs> Not the best thing that uh, you want to come home to. That looks like Mr. Walker is freaking out again. How do we, Sandman? Let's see what you did to my wife. This isn't real. This isn't happening. <sighs> Baby, you just... You just stay right here. I'll come back for you, I promise. I just gotta find the fucker who did this to you. I'll find him myself. The 
the Sacred Heart Hospital. He's going there. And then he'll be there. <laughs> yeah, best uh best writing ever. Um <laughs> he's going there. And then he'll be there. Right, I'm gonna cut this one off here, guys. Um so, uh, our wife has been brutally murdered. He's torn her arm off and broken her neck, I guess. Now, as Sam is going off on this uh, adventure, he's just taken a dose of his medicine. Uh, now, if you notice, when he opened the cabinet, there's actually like two or three bottles of those pills in there. Um, and we heard him shake the pill container. There was plenty of pills in that container. But, you know... For MacGuffin story reasons, he doesn't take the pills with him because why would he? Wouldn't be able to wouldn't be able to use that mechanic otherwise, could they? Anyway, I'm gonna leave this one here. We're gonna cut this one up in half. So uh, I'll catch you in the next part.